Okay, so we are going to try this again, and I'm going to try it on my phone because I don't even understand what it's saying to do on Facebook and live stream and encoders and streaming and OBS, and I don't know that. So I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and go on on my phone, and it was dropping before, so hopefully it doesn't drop now. And I'm going to go back and do the every day in the word. I'm not going to run again, but I did run, and you did see me running. You just didn't hear what I was saying, but that's okay. So we're going to go back into Deuteronomy 11 and we are going to pray that God is going to help this see and go through and be heard. So here we go. And if you see it, do you see it, Mom? Let's see if she can log in and hear it. Just make sure we can be heard. I've got the old view. Yeah. How do I get the I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Let me see if I can go on the PC. I just don't want to keep talking and then it's not even there. So hold on just a second and let me get into my stream and... I'm right here. The phone sucks. Oh, there it goes again. Let's see. I probably keep that sound. Cool. Okay, so we're going to log that off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go back through, and we're in Deuteronomy 11. Love and serve the Lord. So you shall therefore keep love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his rules, his commands always, right? We need to be doing what God has called us to do always, not just when it seems good to us, but when... He has called us to do it, right? And consider today, since I am not speaking to your children who have not known and seen it, right? Because this is the children of Israel that were 20 and under. They came from Egypt. Um, all those that were older than them died in the desert, but their children didn't see what had happened in Egypt. Good morning, Patricia. Glad that you're here. You can hear me, right? Because I guess I was having problems with sound earlier. Um, so he, God is saying, yes. This is for you to pass on to your children. They missed the wonders that I did, so you need to make sure that you're passing it on to them. Consider the discipline of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his outstretched arm. There we go. As they, they came after you, and how the Lord had destroyed them to this day. Forty years later, the Egyptian army, the, what it caused and what happened to them, still was affecting Egypt to this day, right? So, and how the Lord had destroyed them to this day and what he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place and what he did to Dathan and Abram, the sons of Iliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed them with their household, their tents and every living thing that followed them in the midst of all of Israel. So what happened to them was they were not following after God. They were causing dissension in Israel and God allowed the earth to swallow up their whole households. Why? Because they were accountable for their households. And when we lead our households astray, we are accountable for that. And they cause their whole households to be destroyed. Verse 8, you shall therefore keep the whole commandment that I am giving you today, that you may be strong and go in and take possession of the land that you're going to over to possess, that you may live long in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give them and to their offspring, a land flowing with milk and honey. Um, where you're connecting, all right? Um, like garden of vegetables, but the land is going over to connecting, which drinks water by rain from heaven, a land that the Lord your God cares for. So they're coming from where they grew plants in a garden and cultivated it, and the growth was dependent on them. Now the growth is dependent on God. It's God that's going to have to make sure that these things grow. It's God that's going to have to provide for them in this land. The eyes of the Lord, your God, are always upon it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Because God was going to be the one that cared for the land. And if you will indeed obey my commands that I command you today to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, right? So there's a stipulation. If you obey and do and love and serve... He will give the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the latter rain, that you can gather your grain and the grass for your livestock, and you shall eat and be full, right? Take care lest your heart be deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Then the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you. So if you are not right with God, if you start worshiping other gods, then guess what? The anger of the Lord will be kindled against you. He will shut up the heavens so there will be no rain because they have to depend on God even in the promised land. Yes, this is the promised land. Yes, this is the land that God's given you. But if you're not right with God, God is not going to bless it, right? 
He will shut up the heavens, no rain, the land will yield no fruit. You will perish off quickly in the good land that God has given you. It's not the land's fault. It's not God's fault. It's your fault for not doing the good that he has called you to do, right? And for not being in relationship with him. Verse 18. You shall therefore lay up all these words, lay up these words of mine in your heart, in your soul, bind them as a sign on your hand, have them as frontlets between your eyes, teach them to your children, talking of them when you're sitting in your house, when you're walking by the way, when you lie down. God has your children, then they will know, they will understand, and they will be blessed. If you do not, what's going to happen? The road for me down. Who live in Arabah, opposite Gilgal, beside the Oak of Morah? For you are to cross over the Jordan to go in to take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you, right? And when you possess it and live in it, you shall be careful to do all the statutes and the rules that I am setting before you. This is no different than accepting the free gift of Jesus Christ. When you accept it and possess it and take hold of it, then you will do what he's called you to do, right? When you do not, and you do not obey and you do not possess Jesus Christ, then you're doing whatever you want to do. And guess what? You're against God. You're either for God or against God. There's only two sides. There's only always been two sides, right? Chapter 12, the Lord's chosen place of worship. These are the statutes and rules that you shall be careful to do in the land that the Lord your fathers has given you to possess. All the days that you live on the earth, you shall surely destroy all the places where the nations whom you shall dispossess served their gods on the high mountains and on the hills and under every tree because they served their idols everywhere right and god is saying you cannot serve me as you serve as they served the idols because i am not an idol to be served i am a god to be worshiped you are to be in relationship with me you are not to consider me as an idol that you can just prop up in a corner right Okay, so you shall tear down their altars, dash to pieces their pillars, burn the ashram in the fire. You shall chop down the carved images of their gods, destroy their name out of that place. God wants everything that is an idol in the land destroyed. He will not share the land with an idol, right? And he will not share you with the idols in your life. So are you trying to share your life with God and all the other idols that you have in your life and you're saying well I don't worship Asherah poles no but you may worship your job and you may worship your kids and you may worship yourself and your health and other things and guess what those become idols in your life right you shall not worship the Lord your God in that way but you shall seek the place that the Lord your God will choose out of all your tribes to put his name in his habitation there there you shall go and there you shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes, the contribution that you present, your vow offerings, your free will offerings, the firstborn herd of your flock. And there you shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice at you and your households in all that you undertake in which the Lord your God has blessed you. I'm going to prop you up so you're not so short. Here we go. I know it's really high. It's okay. Okay, the firstborn of your herd and your flock, and there you shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice, you and your households, in all that you undertake, in which the Lord your God has blessed you, right? You shall not do according to all that you are doing here today, everyone doing whatever is right in his own eyes. So, for you have not yet come to rest and to the inheritance that the Lord your God has given you. So God's saying, you're not there yet. You know, you're not there yet. Keep going. Don't lose heart, right? For you have not yet... Sorry, let me twist this. Come to the place that God has given you inheritance. Then to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name dwell there. Right now, you're not living in peace. Right now, you have to fight the battle. Right now, you're in the valley, right? You might be in a valley of the shadow right now. But guess what? You will come to the place. You will come to the high hill where you will be able to worship God. And when you look down on from that mountain, on that valley, you will be able to say, this is what God took me from. And they are, he is saying, when you are at peace, then you will look back and you will see what God has brought you from, right? Take care that you do not offer your burnt offerings at any place that you see, but at the place that the Lord will choose in one of your tribes. There you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do all that I'm commanding you. 
However, verse 15, you may slaughter and eat meat within any of your towns as much as you desire according to the blessing of the Lord your God has given you. Wow, right? That's a big deal. They've been eating manna for 40 years. Some kids have only ate manna their whole lives. They were born in the desert and they don't know any different. They get to go to these towns and eat meat. They get a steak for the first time. It's a big deal, right? The unclean and the clean may eat of it as of the gazelle and as of the deer. Only you shall not eat the blood, right? Good morning, Sonia. Glad that you're watching. You shall not eat the blood. You shall pour it out on the earth like water. You may not eat within your towns the tithe of your grain or your wine or your oil or the firstborn of your herd or your flock or your vow offerings or your free will offerings, but you shall eat them before the Lord your God in the place that the Lord will choose. Awesome. Thank you. I'm glad that it's a good video. Um, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God in all that you undertake. Take care. Hold on. He's giving you a warning. Take care that you do not neglect the Levite as long as you live in your land. Right? So in verse 18, he's saying you can eat this stuff. Just take care of the Levites. Why do they need to take care of the Levites? The Levites took care of God. The Levites were in charge of God's house. So they need to be right. His name there is too far from you. They may choose to give you there you go and I've commanded you and just as the gazelle or the deer is eaten so you may eat of it right the unclean and the clean alike may eat of it only be sure that you do not eat the blood why for the blood is the life why just like Jesus Christ died on the cross and we are forgiven of our sins by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony Jesus Christ we cannot eat of the blood why because it represents Jesus Christ right you shall not eat of it. You shall pour it out on the earth like water. You shall not eat it that all may go well with you, with your children after you, when you do what is right in the sight of the Lord. Now for them, they didn't have medicines, doctors, everything that we have today. They could not eat the blood because they could not properly cook anything back then. Now we are clean and it is all different. And so you're okay to eat a medium or steak. But the holy things that are due from you and your vow offerings you shall take and you shall go to the place that the Lord will choose and offer your burnt offerings there, right? The flesh and the blood on the altar of the Lord your God. The blood of your sacrifices shall eat, right? Reconnecting. Because now it's an okay thing, right? Be careful to obey all these words that I command you that it may go well with you and your children after you forever when you do what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. Warning against idolatry. When the Lord your God cuts off, we're in verse 29, cuts off before you the nations whom you go in to dispossess and you dispossess them and dwell in their land, take care that you do not get ensnared to follow them after they have been destroyed before you and that you do not inquire about their gods saying, how do these nations serve their gods? That I also may do the same. How often do we do that? We take out the things in our lives that we shouldn't have, and then we wonder how those things happen, and then we start worshiping those things in our lives. We do that a lot. We do that a lot because we allow things in after we say we shouldn't, but then we do it anyway, right? You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. God doesn't want us to worship him the way the world worships itself. That's not okay. God wants a relationship. God doesn't want idol worship. Okay, so there it goes in verse 31. You shall not worship the Lord your God in this way for every abominable thing that the Lord hates, they have done for their gods. For they even burn their sons and their daughters in the fires to their gods. And you may say, I don't do that. I don't burn. I wouldn't burn my son or daughter in the fires to my gods. I don't have any gods. Really? Because you may have idols in your life that prevent you from seeing God because you have your job and your work and your school and you have um, yourself and your health and your car and you have all these things before and between you and God. And guess what? Your kids are sacrificed in between. That's what happens right? When we put things between us and God, we can't clearly see him and we are not giving a clear representation of God to our kids and we are sacrificing them to the idols in our life because we're not training them up in the way they should go, right? Luke 8, 22 through 39, Jesus calms a storm. One day he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out and as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down the lake and they were filling with water and were in danger. 
Now these are fishermen, right? This is Peter, James, and John. This is their livelihood, right? They were raised as fishermen from their youth. If they felt that they were filling with water and in danger, truly they were filling with water and in danger, okay? And they went and woke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. And then they ceased and there was a calm. And then he said to them, where is your faith? Now we might say, hello, they were in danger. Guess what? Jesus was in the boat. They weren't in danger. When Jesus is in your boat, you're not going to die. Two, he didn't rebuke them before he calmed the waves, right? He calmed the wind and the waves, and then he rebuked them, right? Because that was the time to be able to talk to them. God doesn't rebuke you in the midst of your trial and your tribulation. God deals with your trial and your tribulation, gets you to the other side, and then works on your faith, right? God isn't there using that trial and tribulation to bash you. God is using that trial and tribulation to grow you, all right? God isn't for your worst and your breakdown. God is for your best and your buildup. So don't believe what the enemy will try to tell you that God was in, allowing you to be in danger and that you, you could have died. Believe that God is wanting the best for you and that at the moment of your salvation, your eternal life began and God is using those situations to grow you in your eternal life, right? Okay, so they, he says, where's your faith? And they were afraid, they were afraid and they marveled, saying to one another, who then is this? that he commands even winds and water and they obey him. Okay, so they are tr they are understanding that this man that is with them is and how they are allowing him in their boat, in their lives to impact who they are and change their direction, right? Verse 26. There we go, out of the land. There met him a man from the city who had demons, okay? For a long time he had worn no clothes. He had lived in a house among the tombs. He didn't live in a house, but among the tombs. Um, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. What does that mean? That means that even the demons know who God is. It's not enough to know who God is because even the demons know that, right? And they ask, they have to ask, do not torment me. They have to beg, do not torment me. Okay, so they are subjected to Christ. Why? Because they are the creation. He is the creator. We are created. We are created to be in the likeness of God. God has given us a spirit, not a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So we are not under the enemy, but the enemy is under us through Christ Jesus, right? So we, we see here that the demon knows who Jesus is, but has to beg that he is not tormented. Why? Because he is under Christ. Verse 29, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. Are you bound right now by the demons in your life that are causing you to not be fulfilling the plan and the purpose God has for you? God has a plan and a purpose that is greater than the shackles that this world puts on you. And you need to trust that God has a plan that you need to accomplish. And you need to understand that he has the best for you in mind. Jesus asked him, what is your name? Verse 3. And he said, legion, for many demons had entered him. This is the first time he's asked, what is your name to the demon, right? He normally, Jesus, Jesus is having conversation with the demon, okay? So, and then they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Why? Because that's the power that Jesus had. So now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Because anything that happens in our lives has to pass through the permission hand of God. The enemy doesn't have the power to do whatever he wants in our lives. 
it has to pass through the permission hand of God. And Jesus gave them permission to go into this herd of pigs. Then the demons came out of the man, entered the pigs. The herd rushed down the steep bank and into the lake and were drowned. Now, that might not seem like a big deal to you, but like, oh, unless you like our love animals and you're like, oh my gosh, all the pigs died and that's so terrible. Guess what? The pigs were not supposed to be there. Why? Because this is a Jewish country and the pigs were unclean animals. Yet the Jews were raising them to make money and it was all against God. So there's a whole reason for this whole situation and he allowed the pigs to be destroyed. Why? Because they were an abomination to what God wanted in the Jews' lives. But guess what, right? The herdsmen saw what had happened and they fled and told in the city and in the country. So the people that they just lost all their money that just fl fell over the cliff, they are a little upset. And then the people went out to see what had happened and they came to Jesus and found the man whom the demons had gone, sitting on the ground, fully clothed, right? He's in his right mind and they were afraid. They were afraid because why is this guy sitting here like this? Where's our pigs? And those who had seen it told them how the demon possessed man had been healed, right? And then all the people of the surrounding country of Genesaris asked him to depart from them for they were seized with great fear right because either you accept god and you choose to love him and follow after him or god creates great fear in your life and you ask him to get out of your life you either accept god or reject god if you reject god you don't want any part of him if you accept god he is a re you have relationship with him and he's part of your life but they rejected and they asked him to depart so he got into the boat and, and returned. And the man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. Why? Because he wanted relationship with Jesus Christ. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. He went away proclaiming through the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Oh, some can go out and do what God has called them to do. Some stay home and meet the needs that are there. And Jesus called this man to stay where he was at and be a witness to those around him. That's an amazing thing for us and for him to understand that we have the opportunity to be right here where we're at and to impact those around us. Psalms 30, O oh Lord, do not delay. to the, um, Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let them be turned back and brought to dishonor who delight in my hurt. Let them turn back because of their shame who say, aha, aha, right? We're trying to reconnect. They point out all your failures. They point out where you fall in respect and submission and glory. And, and she gives him all of the honor that he deserves as the husband or spouse in her life, if it's a husband to a wife or a wife to a husband, even though it says wife, it could be it can exchange the same way. Is the husband being there for his wife? Is the wife crowning her husband? Right. But she who brings shame is rottenness in his bones. Are you cancer to your husband's bones? Are you cancer to what he's what he's been called to do? Are you sabotaging your own marriage by your rudeness? by your disrespect, by your lack of love and your lack of care for your marriage. If you're not praying for your husband, who is, right? God has a plan and a purpose for you two to be together, for you to be that helpmate, so be who God's called you to be. God has that in mind for you. And I apologize for this I hear it twice, but I am glad they put it out. And I know that new people heard it this time, so maybe that's what God had intended. So I thank you and, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Talk to you later.